Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking it. I mean, so I think you guys keep looking, if you guys keep looking, I'll keep making it today. I want to talk about this, this, this little post merge stretch we've had. I've been super positive on this season. I've shown nothing but love in an era in which I'm not really a big fan of the show. I think this season has some key differences that I'm proud of, but one of them is not this little short post merge stretch that we keep seeing in these seasons in this new era in which episodes seven through nine always seem to be the exact same level of mid mid is a nice way to put it. Boring is a mean way to put it, uh, but there's definitely something wrong here. And in this video, I want to talk about my theory as to what's wrong with this formula that leads to this meh, you know, stretch of episodes that we've seen in the past few seasons and any other problems that I have with this post merge so far. Um, guys, none of this happens without you guys. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff because it's free, it's easy, and it really helps the channel out. All right, so I think the first part to identifying this problem is looking at what's been the same for the three seasons. And to me, there's been a few things. One, there's been a lack of character development where you're kind of just relying on the edits from the pre merge to carry the season. Two, there's been a lack of heroes and villains being formed, which is where they need to be formed at the merge. And three, and really most importantly, I just see a lack of fun blind sides, really just seeing kind of some outsiders being picked off at the start of the merge, people who we don't really care about, but also don't really have any power in the game. So it's kind of the worst of both worlds. So in this video, I want to talk about these three things. Let's start with the first one. All right. So who are our big characters in the pre-merge? Those characters were Ellie. Those characters were Sammy. I would say Carla fits there as well. Geo. Um, and from the Red Tribe, I, I would say Cody and Jesse. Um, out of those people, Geo is gone. Ellie is gone. That's just how it works. I guess that that's fine. I don't I don't really get the Geo edit, but whatever. Um, and then Ellie, I get giving her a big edit because it, it was fun, you know, to see her built up, built up, built up. And we all expect her to go, go on a long run. And then she just ruins it all in the first merge episode. So that leaves us with a few people. To me, they've done a good job managing Carla's edit. That's the only one that they've done a good job with here. I think Cody's edit is the second best because they haven't really messed it up. They just haven't like developed it. He's kind of just the same type of person. What you'd like to see is they just make him more of a focal point in the season, or at least make him either have a heel turn or a positive hero turn, but something, something that isn't just the exact same. I feel like we're, we're getting the same Cody confessionals, the same Cody comments when we should be getting different ones. And then as far as Jesse goes, right, he's been in control the entire game with Cody. Uh, and so that that really hasn't changed. And that's really all we know about him. Like he's just in control. Again, his story really hasn't been de de developed that much. We don't really get much, you know, about his feelings on the game. It's more of just like game bot Jesse. Uh, and the other person is Sammy, who I think we've been shown to be like very, very um, uh, focal point, like almost a fan favorite in a way. And in the past few episodes, he's been teaming up uh, with Carla and kind of just being controlled by Carla. It goes right against his edit of being a very aggressive player who wants to make a move. He, he was given this edit where like it feels like it's building up to, to a big move. And we haven't really seen that big move come to fruition. We've just seen him be controlled by other people or hold off for one more round to make that big move. And it's confusing because eventually he needs to make the big move if you're gonna give him that edit. It's very, very confusing to me. All right, now we have our second thing, which is the archetypes, right? Who is our heroes? Who is our villains? Who are our fan favorites? You know, and who's the person with the winner edit? Let's start with heroes. Okay, to me, the only person that you could really make that argument for is Cody because he's only gotten positive content and he's been shown to be positive while being surrounded by this negativity, at least at times. For an example, right, Carla is shown kind of berating him and yet he just becomes resilient and is super, super chill. That to me is good for his hero edit. But besides that, he hasn't been built up as a hero. We haven't really seen any conflicts. I don't know whether that's like a, a fault of the editors for not showing it or just it didn't happen in real life, which then you should maybe choose a different person to get the hero edit. But I feel like that hero edit is not the best. Uh, and then as far as villains go, you could have tried to make James a bigger villain, but instead they, they made him a bit just eh. Like I, I've said constantly that I feel like in a season you, you need heroes, villains and a few normal people, you know, for an example, in, in Panama, you know, Shane's a villain, you know, Courtney's kind of a villain, Dan, Danielle's kind of a villain. And, and then your, your heroes uh, are like Sari uh, and Terry. And then your normal person is like Aris. 
And I feel like in this new era, we really have an issue of like everyone is the, like the quote unquote normal person. No one is like the cuckoo or the like really, really smart or the really, really, really nice or mean person. It's just like everyone's normal. Just eh. And I feel like like when you do that, you really lose out on, on having a big villain. I thought Cody would be given this big villain edit. And if that was the case, that would be super, super cool. Um, but it feels like they're trying to go more for, for, for the hero side, which is kind of like, OK, but then where's your villain? Who is it? If James is not your big villain, is Jesse your big villain? I think he's gotten the, the, the most negative content. And at this point, I don't really feel like Jesse is that big of a villain. I don't know. Do you? Let me know down below in the comments. As far as a fan favorite edit, I think they tried it with Gabler, but he's just stayed so low in the past few episodes that it's hard to really call him a quote unquote fan favorite. I mean, he, he said it himself that he's trying to lay low and lower his threat level after that big move at the merge. And then winner edit, there's nobody right now who I feel like could be a winner other than Carla and maybe Owen. Owen is a real reach. And that's just because he's gotten a big boost in edit in, in, in the past few episodes. And then Carla obviously has gotten like the classic well, winner's edit of being not really opposed to anyone giant. Because usually a winner is either really opposed to a villain or is just not opposed to really anyone and is playing really under the radar. And to me, she's played in under the, the the radar game where, where she's made moves but never really been blatantly in too much control or you know r raised her th threat level too high um, and then on top of that i feel like carla has also gotten a mix of negative and positive content which makes her more balanced and not like an, an, an edit that's almost too perfect and so i think carla is another person who could win but besides that i mean it's really just two people at this point who i'd feel confident saying like hey, yeah i guess they could really win because sammy had it and now he's losing it being very passive trying to kind of follow around carla which leads me to, to believe it has to be carla right i mean who else who else could it be it's very very confusing here for sure um, and then the third point uh, which is kind of just about the lack of blind sides and the fact that at the start of the, the merge here we're taking out characters who we don't really care about again Dwight he was not really built up and I, I guess he was a little bit but not in a blind side type of way he was built up in a smart player type of way so it's confusing to see him get blindsided here in a really weird spot um and then besides that the ellie blindside fantastic that's what we need but in these past two episodes we've seen what janine go and then dwight go and now ryan go and the james boot was cool but i think it was lowered because it was at a tribal with only five people that that's why i hate this split twist because you're going from the pre-merge to the merge and then back to the pre-merge and then back to the merge to me, it's like just trust your merge. The merge is the most important part of the game. Don't skip out on two rounds, making it like the pre-merge again. Those are very valuable rounds of gameplay, at, at, at least for me. Um, and so I think that's also a really, really bad idea. And then seeing Janine go in kind of a puny vote, I, 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 don't, I don't know if this is the player's fault, the editor's fault, the show's like fault for the, the format, like emerging too early, emerging too late. I, I really don't know what it is, but it's definitely a problem to keep on the lookout to see if it continues for the next seasons to follow. But what do you think down below in the comments? Let me know if, if you haven't already like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. It really helps the channel out. Again, none of this happens without you guys. And that's what I'll talk to you guys in the next one.